Now we play a round called You went to NATO, I went to NATO. This <laughs> game involves Tom and Reese. So if you could make your way to the performance area, please. This round is a stand up challenge. I launched a wheel of news, and whoever chooses to stop one of our performers must step forward and talk about that subject. Okay, let's spin the wheel. And the first subject is the environment. Who wants to come in that? Reese. We've got to do more, haven't we? We all know it's a big issue, the environment. We've got to do more stuff, but they're expecting too much from us too soon. Okay, it's baby steps. Like, I know that I need to switch to a plant based diet, really, but it's baby steps. Like, recently, I've given up chicken nuggets, all right? <laughs> It might not seem like a big deal, OK, but I've gone nugless. That's what I decided. <laughs> three months ago, I saw the first climate march. I was like, yeah, no more nuggets, right? And I'm smashing it. It's been three months, not had a single nugget. I'm doing so well. So, like confession, I'm eating a lot of goujons. <laughs> twice as many. And they've got way more real chicken in as well. It's awful for the planet. It's a terrible mistake. I thought we'd solved it with the bags. When we switched to charging 10p for the bag, I thought that was the end of the issue. I thought we'd done it. But it's not enough of a deterrent, is it, 10p, when you're at the checkout and you haven't remembered your canvas bag, and they go, do you want a bag for 10p? You're like, well, what's the alternative? I just eat all this now. <laughs> yeah. What's for dinner tonight? Oh, cauliflower, mustard and Dettol. Yes. <laughs> I need a bag, please. Costa are the same. Costa, they'll give you 10p off your coffee if you're taking a reusable cup, right? Because they're like, oh, we're Costa, we care about the environment. No, you don't, mate. If you care about the environment, Costa, why are your receipts the size of a duvet? <laughs> Get a but it is handy having that 10p, because you can take that 10p and spend it on a plastic bag in Sainsbury's. So it is ideal. But... No, but I think I know why middle-aged people don't like Greta Thunberg, right? And it's because she makes their kids look shit. <laughs> you can't brag about your kids with her on the scene. This is parents in the playground stuff now, isn't it? With their parents just going, oh, yeah, oh, is your son Jamie? He's made the football team, has he? Oh, well done. My daughter is the face of the campaign to rescue this planet from the jaws of oblivion. But um, <laughs> good luck with a little kickabout, Jamie. Off you go. <laughs> Oh, your son, Lucas, he's made his grade four cello, has he? Ah, oh, well done. Yeah, my daughter is the reason he might live to see grade five. Lovely <laughs> <laughs> stuff, thank you very much, <laughs> OK, that leaves Tom. Let's see what your topic is. Let's spin the wheel. And uh, it's travel. Tra travel, OK, fine. Well, I travel from over there. <laughs> <laughs> so, I, um, one of my favourite travel experiences was at secondary school when we went on the school music trip to France. And to get on the school music trip to France, you had to be part of the choir. I was in the choir, and it basically meant you got to hang out with all the other 13-year-old homosexuals <laughs> who didn't yet realise they were homosexuals and their chatty female friends. <laughs> and it was a great place to go and learn how to play a show tune on the flute. Not a euphemism. And... <laughs> This was back in the day when it didn't matter where you were going with the school. If you went on any school trip, you had to go by coach. Like, if you go to Australia, you go by coach. <laughs> this was supposed to be a five-day trip to France. We spent two days on the coach getting there and two days getting back. It was basically a day in France. <laughs> On this trip, you really had to make the best of the coach trip. And uh, for me, my favourite bit was when we got to stop off at the French hypermarket. So I thought that would be a great place for me to show off how much better I am than everybody else, because I'd actually been paying attention in French. So I went over to the patisserie and I said to the man there, Bonjour, je voudrais un croissant, s'il vous plaît. And according to the French classes, the man behind the counter should have responded by saying, oui. <laughs> Il y a un croissant ici. Which, when you think about it, is basically the equivalent of someone coming over here and saying, hello, I'd like to buy a pasty, please. And then the man behind the counter responding by saying, yes! <laughs> there is a pasty here. I'm not even mentioning that it's part of a meal deal. <laughs> So I said, bonjour, je voudrais un croissant, s'il vous plaît. And then the man behind the counter responded in normal French by going, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> I had no idea what he was saying. Blah, 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 blah. I mean, my friend Kevin was no help. The only French he spoke was the French horn, which is a euphemism. I mean, I said they teach us how to speak French. Most of the time, they teach us how to sing it. I mean, I could have stood there and gone, que la la da da ta an the idea of a 13-year-old English homosexual standing in the middle of a French hypermarket going, what is the date of your birthday? Couldn't be any more absurd. So I just responded by saying, oui, oui, d'accord, d'accord. Ended up with eight kilograms of ham. 
Thank you very, very much. Poise there at the top.